I have a question? Yes, sir. What if, uh, you said several times, and I thoroughly understand that one of the problems is, what is a significant spill or overflow? And it seems like largely the issue is compared to what? So what if you published a table of the spills so that people could see? This one is tiny compared to these ones that have happened before, maybe even color-coded, I don't know. And if you also put them on a map, of course, the city and the county have the fabulous Valor GIS system, maybe with for each one a pop-up of, here it is, compared to the rest. Well, and I think, and as I mentioned earlier, and correct me wrong, Henry, but when you look at spills, it's hard to say that a 50,000 gallon spill today is not a big one, but then, again, it depends on the rain event. Like if there's a big rain event, 50,000, it may be whatever percentage. If there's no rain event, yeah, if there's no, if there's no rain event, but we have like a major sewer line break, and it'll say it's going in a neighborhood, well then that's, that's right there. So again, that's where that's what makes it very tricky, well, and that the, was a the, conversation. The regulatory agencies yeah. determine what the reporting yeah. requirements are, and that's what we follow. We, we follow their certain protocols or certain volumes or certain amounts if it connects to a, 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 any type of waterway, it's mandatory. So we follow the requirements of the regulatory agencies. Yeah. That's what we want to have. And everyone appreciates that. Yeah. It's just that you know, for marketing and PR purposes, as Eric Marzoff was pointing out, if you could make it even more visible by having the comparisons readily available to people, and as you pointed out yourself, having a map for contamination is extremely useful. Are you saying like the 10,000 gallons, which is considered a major spill? Like, is that what right. you're saying that way? Right, next to a waterway, any spill mm -hmm. of any volume. I mean, we right. have to put it in a press release and for public knowledge. Regardless of the size. And the map yeah, won't show, yeah. as Emily said, there's no way in the We give the address, yeah. Yeah. you know, we give and, and the amount of the cause, you know, when it started, when it stopped the total. Yeah. <laughs> well, but like you were saying earlier, if the river is high and flowing, yeah, if it's a flood, it's I mean, it's a minor it's, it's, percentage. Right. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to convey that? But but all so, of our spills are occurring in rain events. I mean, except well, the exception of like a broken line. You got yeah, a broken right. line 30 feet in the ground. I mean, that. Right. I mean, uh, we just had a recent spill at an apartment complex caused by grease buildup in their collection system. Mm -hmm. Not NAS and theirs. And that caused a spill, which ended up getting into the watershed. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a large one; it was 375 gallons. But you know, there's some things. You know, you know, we've issued them a notice of violation for not following the ordinance. So we try to take action, but we need help sometimes. Even in residential neighborhoods, we have grease blockages. We put door hangers out, saying, "Don't dump your grease down the drain." I, I, most of you all are probably on septic systems. You don't dump grease grease down your drain of the septic system. It's going to clog up your drain field. You know, you don't throw bleach down there. You don't throw, you know, drain cleaner down there because it's going to it's going to kill the bacteria in the septic system. Well, so it's it's trying to educate people what they need to 